Borkar from uh, Chennai Mathematical Science Institute, and she will tell us about constructing, expanding, generating sets for solvable permutation groups. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. I also thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to give a talk here. And also I thank all the speakers who have done a wonderful job so far and have really increased my knowledge and interest in this area. So one thing I would like to tell is you don't you won't find any logic here because I don't know it much myself. So it's, it mainly comes in the computation part of the workshop thing. Symmetry. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, symmetry because you get it from groups. So uh, as, uh, this is a joint work with uh, V. Arvind, Partha Mukhopadhyay and Yadu Vasudev. And I would like to thank Yadu for a pre preliminary version of these slides which he presented elsewhere. <coughs> okay, so first of all, let's see what expander graphs are. So these are the graphs where every subset is well connected to the rest of the world. So in particular, if we take any subset S, the edges which go out of S are some constant fraction, uh, some constant times the size of S. And this happens, this should happen for all subsets S of reasonably small size. And uh, if this happens, we say that this graph is a C edge expander. So we won't directly deal with edge expansion. Instead, we will look at a quantity uh, spectral expansion. So if A is the normalized adjacency matrix of the graph, and uh, so it's normalized, so highest eigenvalue is 1. And the next largest eigenvalue is what defines the expansion of the graph. And if it is a constant bounded away from 1, then uh, we have a good spectral expansion in the graph. And there are various applications of expander graphs. So people are interested in constructing families of expander graphs, ideally for each value of n. But if not for all n, then at least for sufficiently close values of n. And these graphs should, of course, be efficiently constructible. So I will, uh, we will be particularly looking at Calle graphs here. So these are the graphs which are defined from groups. So here, for example, we have a group G6. We identify the uh, vertex of the graph with an element of the group. And then we have a subset S of the group, which defines the edge relations here. So for every element G of the group and every element S of the subset, there is an edge from G to GS. So here we have a directed graph. Because, uh, because uh, there is no minus 2 in the set. And let's say we put another element 3 here, and we get more edges. And we are interested in uh, actually undirected graphs, so we will also put minus 2 here, and we will actually achieve an undirected graph from this. What is a generating set of a group? It is a set from which every element can be generated by multiplication. And it is known that every group has a generating set, which is, which is of size at most logarithmic in the size of the group. And what we are interested in is getting an expanding generating set for the group. Is better. Use the arrows. Use the arrows. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so what we are interested in <coughs> is getting a generating set S for group, which is which gives an which leads to an expanding Calle graph. And in particular, we say a generating set is lambda expanding if the corresponding Calle graph has a spectral expansion of lambda. There is nothing new about this because in fact many known expander constructions come from groups. So for example, this one by Lobotsky and there is another one by Lobotsky, Phillips, Sarnak, and Margulis. But what we want to, so the, this is for specific groups. Our question is about all groups. So for all groups, is it possible to 
get a generating set which gives a good exp uh, expansion in the Kali graph. So the first question of course is do they at all exist? So do all groups have expanding generating sets? And the answer is yes. And in fact, not only that they exist, they, are in, they exist in large numbers. So if we randomly pick a subset uh, with high probability, it will be an expanding generating set. So this is a theorem by Alone and Rockman, which gives a randomized construction for expanding generating sets. And you just have to pick these many elements uniformly at random from G, and we'll get a lambda spectral expansion with high probability. So what about de-randomization of this? So the de-randomization is known. There is one <coughs> de-randomization by Vigdarsson and Ziao, which, give, which uses chain of bounds for matrix-valued random variables. We gave another one, which uses just conditional expectations. However, the drawback of these is that they both need the group to be given as input in terms of its multiplication table. So this is re really wasteful because a group can be much more concisely represented <coughs> in terms of its generating set. And the question we address here is, what if the group G is given as a generating set S? Now, if this generating set itself is an expanding one, we are done. But typically, uh, we may not have it. And in that case, can we get another genera generating set which is expanding? And this is this we answer this question for solvable permutation groups, and we give we give a generating set of this particular size, which is uh, lambda expander. So when we talk about solvable groups, the obvious property that is useful uh, is that they have a derived series of this form. So here we have a derived series G1, G2, G3 up to GK. And every GI is normal in GI plus 1. And the quotient group uh, GI, GI, uh, quotient GI plus 1 is in fact an abelian group. So how do we plan to use it? So if we have an expanding generating set for GI plus 1 and also for this quotient group, we want to combine the, generating, uh, the expanding generating sets for these two and get one for uh, the group GI. And then we want to apply this procedure repeatedly. So now the problem of finding an expanding generating set boils down to finding an expanding generating set for these two and then for combining them. So we'll see each of these steps. So let's just see one step. So let's say n is a normal subgroup of G. If A is an expanding generating set for n and B is an expanding generating set for, let's say, G quotient n, then is it enough to just take a union of this A and B to get an expanding generating set for the original, graph, original group G? The answer is both yes and no, because although this is an expanding generating set, the expansion is not as good. So from lambda here, we go to 1 plus lambda over 2. So it deteriorates the expansion. And this is not good because if we repeatedly apply this procedure, then we will keep on losing on the expansion. And finally, we won't have a good expander. So fortunately, there is a result by, uh, there, there is uh, something called de-randomized squaring by Rosenman and Vadan. So the concept, uh, the idea here is that if we have this particular expansion for G, and if we square the corresponding Kali graph, the expansion improves, but then the degree blows up. And using de-randomized squaring, we precisely avoid the blow up in the degree, and we still improve expansion. So from this size, the generating set now grows to a constant factor of this, and we get a lambda expansion as we need. And as it turns out, this constant factor doesn't harm us much. We still get a reasonable expander in the end. So we have seen one step where we, we get an expanding generating set for a normal subgroup and a quotient group. And from that, we get uh, an expanding generating set for the original group. And now we recursively want to apply this procedure. So recursively apply this procedure to get an expanding generating set of this particular size, where now we, it remains to get this AI, which is an expanding generating set for the quotient group. Now, this quotient group is abelian, and we expect that it might be easier to deal with abelian groups than uh, with non-abelian ones. <coughs> so 
So first of all, this is good because the length of the derived series is just logarithmic in n. Note that the size of the group itself could be as large as n factorial. So still this series is quite short and in fact this leads us to an expanding generating set of this particular size. Okay. So now the only question we have to address is how to get expanding generating sets for the abelian quotient groups. Okay, here we have we use a result which says that for, for any such abelian quotient group G quotient N, we have a homomorphism with an onto homomorphism from this group onto this G quotient N. Well, why is this useful? Because there is another result which says that if we have an expanding generating set for this, that also gives an expanding generating set for this. So in particular, if there is a homomorphism from H1 to H2, then a generating set for H1 can simply be transformed into a generating set for H2 by taking its image under the homomorphism. <coughs> okay, so from G quotient N, now we have come to this product group. And how do we get still an expanding generating set for this product group either? So because this product group happens to be abelian, we can have similar series for this just like we had for the original group G. And we will apply the same procedure repeatedly. So look at the normal series for this, where the quotient group is fixed and it is only this uh, Zp1 to the n up to Zpk to the n. So this is a slightly simpler group than the original one and we need to get an expanding generating set for this one. Again, how and that the answer is apply the same thing, is apply the same procedure recursively. And also this size relation is very nice here. That is if we have a size s expanding generating set for this, then we have a s times some polylog factors generating set for this. So while going from one group to another here, we don't lose much on the size. So note that our goal is to come to come close to the randomized construction. We will not achieve as much here, but still we are keeping the size reasonably low. Now for this group also, we again apply the same procedure. That is, uh, again this group has a derived series. And the quotient group here is a much simpler one that is Zp1 cross Zp2 cross up to Zpk. And if we have an expanding generating set here for size s, we have one of n square s here. So these constructions are not very simple that, uh, for illustrating here, but indeed, uh, yeah, I don't think I can go into much detail of these constructions. But, uh, and now comes this simple group. Uh, by simple, I don't mean uh, in mathematical sense, but just the one which looks simple. And there is a result by Aitai and others which says that for the, for the group ZT, for the group ZT, we have an expanding generating set for every constant lambda and that is of size almost logarithmic in t. And now this Zp1 cross Zp2 cross Zpk that is isomorphic to Zt for t equal to product of those primes. So we can actually construct an expanding generating set for that group. So actually that's all and I finished too early but so so this was for solvable groups. And what do we know about more general permutation groups? So in, uh, we, we can't have a series like this for general permutation groups. But in fact, if we apply de-randomized squaring repeatedly using uh, some suitable graphs for squaring, then actually we get some expanding generating set for it. But the parameter is pretty bad. So it is here it was n square. And in terms of for general permutation groups, we get something like n to the c for a large constant c. 
and it will be interesting to see something that comes closer to the randomized one. So because the group G has size at most n factorial, one would expect that an n log n size generating set should be possible, but then we don't know how to get it. So our, our construction also gives an improved construction of epsilon bias spaces over G D to the n. Yeah, I don't go into the details here either. <laughs> Any questions from Azarkan? Um, just to make sure I understand correctly, the groups are presented by giving the, gener the generating set S, yes. and these generators are given S permutations of 1 through N, because the group is a subgroup of the cement. Yes. When you take, when you start forming the derived series, so you just one step, take the commutator subgroup of such a thing, um, is there a useful bound for how many generators are going to be needed for the commutator subgroup? I mean, a priori it could be quadratic in the, in the original group, but surely something better than that must be happening. Because otherwise when you iterate it gets big. So, uh So the question is, if, if, I, if I have a reasonable number of generators giving me G or G1, yes. then if I don't know any group theory and I just look at the definition, the number of generators I need for G2 can be quadratic in that. And for G3 is another quadratic. And by the time I get, of course, GK is trivial, but somewhere in the middle, I could have an awful lot of generators. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there group theoretic information that says, no, I shouldn't worry about that, it's going to be OK? Uh, well, so I don't know exactly about the sizes of these generating sets. But what I know is uh, that Lux has given a polynomial time algorithm to actually compute these derived series. OK, so if there's a polynomial time algorithm, it can't get too bad. And uh, yeah, unless the generating set blows up too much, we are not worried about it because anyway, we want to. Uh, we just want to use it for getting the information about the group. Yeah, so uh, have you studied some special classes of, of non-solvable groups, like alternating or? Uh, no. no, not yet. Not yet. Thank you very much. Thank you.